Hey, you guys. Um, if you could please drop a like and a uh, comment, and please don't forget to subscribe while you're watching the video. It really helps me out, really helps out the channel, really helps out with the community. Please and thank you. All right, you guys. Welcome back to another Seven Days to Die. Um, this one I'm going to be doing kind of like my reaction, my take on the new Alpha. Um, I do have some thoughts and ideas on it that I really like to share. Now, I'm just kind of go through the list here. I have kind of set out. So the first thing is new POIs. That's always a good thing. Uh, when you play this game, you know, you get two, three, four hundred hours into it. You kind of just memorize all the POIs, kind of run into them, kind of just memorize the layout. So it's very hard to be surprised on anything after you play this game enough times. So I really like the idea of new POIs. I think I read somewhere it was going to be like over 50. So that's always going to be fun. Not exactly sure, but I know it's going to be a ton. Uh, we're having new decorations, cars, trucks, tractors, furnitures, and many other items. So we're just getting new layouts, new designs, new lookouts. So just to make the world a lot more interesting, you know, a lot more nicer place to kind of check out. Um, biome percent sliders. Now this is where you're going to be able to more customize uh, the map, the biomes, how you want to generate the world that you're going to stay in. I like to generate. I don't really like the navs game that much because again, once you memorize where everything's at, the game's not too hard anymore. Um, now, this is the biggest change that I, that I want to touch on. So it's the learn by reading system. Um, to be honest, I'm going to have to play this out to kind of tell how I feel about it. Up front and honest, it's just changing the game in a way that's to change it. It's not it doesn't really make any sense, right? Um, I love the skill levels before they changed them over where, you know, the more you use something, the better you got. And then the perks just increase that. So I really like the idea, but the only re way they're bringing that back is for the crafting skill part of it, not anything else. So again, I, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. Um, you're going to have to find pretty much all the schematics for everything in your looting. And when you level up different parts of your tech tree or your skill tree, excuse me, um, that's when you're able to unlock, you get increased bonuses to find the magazines that interfere with that. Now, this is... Now, this is this is something that this last part here is really has me confused. If you guys it says when you max out a skill, that slight prob bonus granted by the perks for finding the corresponding magazine for that skill drops off, meaning once you max it out, you're not going to find that the magazine will still show up there, but no longer have a boost. So I, I mean, that sounds kind of dumb. So you're saying if I max it out, I no longer have the ability to find the magazines for it, but I need the magazines to find everything. So if I max out the tree before I find everything, I, I feel like it's kind of fucked. I feel like that part might have to be better explained or more worked out thoroughly because it doesn't make sense. Now, um, the Intervactum Environmental Hazards. This one's pretty cool, <laughs> giving new layouts to the map. Uh, just ways you have to get around to kind of solve around just make it more exploring So I, I think that's a good thing now the doors we're gonna have double doors So that's always good now this next part is the part I love the most so partially damaged doors with large holes can be shot or melee through this way So if there's a giant fucking hole in the door I can actually hit the enemy not have to wait for them to break it down So that's good the water part I'm not gonna touch up on because again who the hell cares about the water They're not gonna get ever get it right anyway, so we'll see how that goes in the new alpha again I, I don't really expect much it's not really that major part of a game unless they want to bring like water perks and fishing and all that other stuff which would just drag out the game for having such a huge game so that's just a lot of entities and stuff so i i really don't know um you know in regards to the water stipulation if it really plays that big of a deal inside seven days to die um, the armor, um, we're getting new iron armor, new commando military armor, which will be nice. I think that's the uh, the maxed out light armor that we have, so that's always good. And it says more details to come. So it looks like they're going to be adding different types of armor, maybe more designs. Um, just going to have to see as far as that goes. Now this next part is the one that's really, really big. They're removing all murky, uh, they're removing all empty glass bottles. Um, it will only be found in loot and water sources. They're adding a new system do collector w uh, workstation. So you're going to have to legitimately collect it. You can drink directly from water sources now, but you take five points of damage and has a chance to give you dysentery. Uh, pot is now required to boil murky water because again, you don't have the glasses anymore. Um, and then glue crafting taken into consideration. So that's going to be interesting to see as far as that goes. 
Now this next one, uh, spears, they're reworking how everything's being done with the spears. So spear damage is being increased. Um, they're taking away the, the throw attack and made it a power thrust, which I think is the best part because that shit never made more any sense to me as far as the spear's main damage coming from being thrown. And the only other way to increase the damage is if you use the magazines. So I really like that. Um, again, I think they're actually adding a perk specifically for the spears. So that's going to be good as well. So we can actually have those increase the damage and get a bunch. Uh, this next one, chunk reset option. Uh, default's disabled, so you can actually make it so your shit respawns up to 70 days. And then if no, uh, so basically if nobody enters that area, as far as a player goes, uh, the, the stuff will reset. And then uh, what prevents the uh, reset is land claim block or a bedroll. Now this next one's going to be really cool. Um, trader changes. Um, new trader compounds, so that's nice, always having a variety. Uh, the trader's inventories are going to be rebalanced with the new crafting system as far as the level creation goes, so that'll be nice. Removal of secret stash. Um, I never realized, I never really why that was there in the first place, because you always had access to it. Maybe if they locked it behind where you have to get maybe level 5, they would make sense, but the secret stash having access to it, just kind of dumb. Now, further specialization of traders and what they carry. This is going to have to be done very carefully because let's say you're needing a resource like uh, guns or food and you get stuck with Trader Gen who's a, you know, a doctor or the medical supplies. So they're going to have to really kind of, they can do it halfway. So they're going to have special stuff and then they're going to have to have like a certain set of stuff that's always going to be there just so that, uh, you know, players don't get fucked over and have to you know, worry about finding which trader and restarting like within the first two days because they got the wrong trader in the wrong biome. The next part, the one my favorite part, electricity changes. So wires are only going to be visible, visible when holding the wire tool. I personally like this. I thought the fucking wires were always ugly to look at and deal with and kind of take on. So I really think that is a positive negative, uh, positive change, excuse me. Now, the player HUD changes. Um, danger meter added to show danger level of biomes and POIs. Um, I, I don't really know about that because, again, a lot of this game is exploring, see what you stumble into, see what it has to offer. So I, I'm not 100% in regards to that. I think it takes away a little bit of the, uh, the randomness of the game and wandering into an area or a POI you shouldn't and not really know. Now, you can actually toggle on the crafting recipe if you're looking for items. Again, I don't like this one in particular because, again, the game is about scavenging. So if the game is going to tell you, uh, well, wait, is it? Okay, so you can, never mind, never mind. I misunderstood this. So you can, it, it, it just toggles on there so that you can see what you need if you really need it, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe that one's good. We'll see. Now, this next one, perk rebalancing. So, sexual Tyrannosaurus is removed. That's a good thing. Now, the reason why is because the stamina improvement is now incorporated into separate perks for each relevant weapon. What this means is that that sexual Tyrannosaurus is going to be embedded in the skill that's dictated by uh, this in the skill that's dictated by the weapon or whatnot. So for your, what is it, uh, the strength one, what is it, uh, I, I forgot the name of the thing, but that one, when you take level one, you'll get that extra 20%, 40%, 60%, 80% or whatever it is. I can't remember the exact percentage, but that way, so it's incorporated. It's always nice for that because having to spec into the strength tree and waste those skill points in the early games really fucking stupid. So I like this. I think it's really a positive change. Um, as an additional, they also incorporated flurry of blows into the weapons as well. So that's a good thing. Um, that way, so that's two perks you don't have to spec into or two kind of skill trees you don't have to spec into in order to mac those out to get the full actual build as far as the character goes. The next one is Grease Monkey. So the slight change with this is all repair kits no longer restore vehicles back to max health. So you're going to have to be very careful about actually damaging your vehicle. Um, they actually, repair kits now actually repair a certain amount. And your Grease Monkey skill increases that amount. I think at max level, no. So you can uh, restore, it adds an additional 10%. So you can get like an extra 50%. 
Um, what they did for the vehicle change is increase vehicle damage to blocks, train, and entities by various amounts, increase vehicle damage received by collisions, improve vehicle block collision calculations, and greatly increase damage given and received to and from block collision, increased health for the vehicles, vehicle spark effects on bigger self-damage hits, and vehicle blood splatter on high damage collisions with entities. So I think we're able gonna we're finally gonna be able to kill shit with the car. So that's gonna be good. We're actually gonna be able to do damage. Now, last but not least, this is the roadmap to when they finally release the game and then beyond. So they're gonna add bandits, um, which is gonna be really nice. The ability to attack, defend, and take those out add a bit of spice to the game. They're gonna rework the armor, add more armors, more stuff. They're gonna work on the weather system, so we get more of a variety of weathers. There's gonna be factions involved and then a storyline to work with. So that's always gonna be good. Now this last one, Steam Workshop Support. What this means is that they're gonna incorporate an easier way to mod and incorporate the mods into the base game. So I think I'm about 70, 30. I think 70% of this stuff's actually good. 30% of the stuff is just changing to change. Um, other than that, I'm really excited to see where the game goes, see how it plays out again. Just the new skill thing is going to be... I have to try it out again. I'm iffy on it. I'm not 100% against it, but I'm not 100% for it either. But um, I hope you guys like the content. Please drop a like. Don't forget to comment. And... Uh, you know, thank you so much for the support. I'm really happy, uh, you know, growing the channel, growing the uh, community, you know, just doing everything. Thank you so much, guys.